Uh. Oh, jeez. Sorry. Hey guys, what's up? It's Bro A here, and I'm a dragon tonight. <laughs> oh, I hope you don't mind the raining sounds in the background because it's currently storming in the Philippines. Well, we have a typhoon, and um, it's pretty scary. Okay, so today I'm gonna tell you guys why I love Five Nights at Freddy's series. Now, if you don't know Five Nights at Freddy's, you're so missing out. Well, I love Five Nights at Freddy's ever since it was released last year. Then, up until now. Now, number one is the concept. Now, the concept of this game is that you're in the office, you're a security guard, you're watching cameras, shutting the doors, closing the lights. Well, there's no doors in FNAF 2 and 3. Only one in 4. Well, this took place in a kid's pizzeria, and it's like a Chuck E. Cheese's kind of place, and uh, I've never been in a Chuck E. Cheese's, so yeah, I just researched I just researched some pictures of what Chuck E. Cheese's look like, so I'm like, oh yeah, this could really look like. Five Nights at Freddy's if it's real. And I don't think anyone has made a game which is based in a kid's pizza place and that is just unique. That's a great idea. Like you never know uh, a fun place could be a place of death. Well aside from circus. Sometimes I am scared of circus. Now here's number two. The story. While I was playing Five Nights at Freddy's 1 last year, uh, I had so many questions because it doesn't say like a bit of backstory or what the game is about or what's going to happen or why the animatronics are acting that way or is it how it's programmed or someone programmed them to be a killer at night? I have no clue that time. I was keep on asking why are these animatronics were demonic or being possessed? I don't know. If I just don't know. Like, what did I do to be killed by these animatronics? Why? And that's where the game theorists, Mike, and 8-bit gaming came to my life. I just passed through videos of them and I just immediately subscribe because they're making sense like from the hidden details of the game they come up with theories which made sense like clues were right there and I just I just didn't notice them and that is just amazing you guys rock so yeah I finally learned the hidden mysteries slash stories behind the scary pizza place to check out their stories, theories, facts, these three channels will be in the description box. If you guys don't know them, you should check them out right now. Alright, number three, Easter eggs. Now, there's so many Easter eggs in each series. And I find it interesting because, well, I love game Easter eggs. Do you guys love Easter eggs? Well, give this video a thumbs up then. Well, the easter eggs in this game, uh, well, it's either cool, funny, or creepy. And I've missed a lot of them in part 1, or 5 Nights at Freddy's 1, except for Golden Freddy. Well, I was on night 2, uh, I encountered the Golden Freddy poster. Well, I'm like, this poster isn't here before. Like, Freddy is the one on that wall, and why is he yellow? and it's like half of his face is showing on the poster. I was staring at the screen for a bit long and put down my camera and I got scared so much because Golden Freddy is inside the room like just all limp not showing any movements or anything and there goes the blinking screen it's me, it's me and I'm like okay fuck no, nope, nope, nope and then suddenly 
he jump scared me by showing his whole face in front of the screen. That was just so creepy, including that noise. Then after that happened, the game crashed. And that made me crazy the whole day. Also that easter egg that is pretty cool because it releases your um, scare factor. Like, it releases your attention for making it sound a bit funny. Which is the honking noise on Freddy's nose in your office poster. Well, the gang poster in the wall. It is actually funny, like... Like that. Then on the second game, uh, the easter egg that I've seen, like personally, I've seen was the paper plate inside my office and I'm like wait what is this doing here you're in the party room so that was freaking me out the most because I'm like the paper plates are possessed dun, dun, dun. well I'm not gonna say everything till uh, part 4 of the series because that'll take forever Smike has a lot of them like he has videos I'm showing all the easter eggs from 1 to 4. Now number 4. This game won't be complete without the Predators. Which is the animatronics. Who knew these attractions could be scary at night? Well Scott Cotton, you did a great job. There's Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy and Golden Freddy. Well, Golden Freddy is just a suit from one, two, three. I think he appeared in Five Nights at Freddy's three, but as a, like a hidden Easter egg. Now on FNAF two, uh, we have the old animatronics, same characters, but there's toy versions of them. And uh, on Foxy's side, well, there's Mangle, which is like a female version of him. And in addition, there's Balloon Boy and the Puppet. Well, they don't seem like animatronics, but they're part on... They have a huge part on this. Now on FNAF 3, we only have one, which is Springtrap. And the rest who appear in the game were phantoms which just randomly scares you like crazy now in FNAF 4 um, actually in FNAF 4 we have we still have Bonnie, Chica, Freddy, Foxy Golden Freddy or Fredbear in this game and uh, in addition to that we have Plush Trap which is like a bonus minigame and we also have the Freddles as the community named the small Freddies. And that was just creepy. Those tiny Freddies, they creep the shit out of me. And also the bonus character for FNAF 4 on the Halloween edition is Nightmare Balloon Boy. Alright, so number 5, uh, what I love is the phone calls. Now the phone guy is the only guy you were talking to the whole time or listening to the whole time ever since the beginning. Honestly, uh, when I played FNAF 1, uh, I'm like, what's the point of listening to this phone call? So I just mute it. At first I'm like letting it uh, talk to me, but uh, on the following nights I didn't let it talk to me so I keep losing a lot. So I'm like, fuck this sh Then I realized that I should listen to these phone calls because he has somewhat instructions on what you, you should do inside your office or what's your objective. Also, he was telling a bit of backstory of the place. Um, something happened. Something happened from the past and like a bit of tragedy like a tragedy happened uh, from year 1987 I guess or 1983 I don't know anymore 
Also, uh, a lot of people, like before the game theorists and Apeit Gaming and Smike and the other YouTube theorists theorize the game, like who is Phone Guy. Uh, a lot of FNAF fans already figured that Phone Guy is Purple Guy. Purple, purple Guy. Yep. Purple guy. I'm sorry, I can't speak. Alright, number six. The trailer slash teasers. Not just the game trailers that made the community crazy, got scared, excited, whatever you wanna call it. There's actually well they're actually pretty cool. And I can still remember my reaction when I saw the trailers. I was like so excited. And I got scared. Sorry. But aside from the cool trailers, uh, we also have the teasers. And these teasers only came out on scottgames.com, which is the creator's website. The only thing interesting about his website is that there's pictures on the center of your screen and the image has hidden stories in it like well not story hidden details in it well from raising the lighting of the photo uh, hidden messages in the source code additional features in the photos and clues that were left behind those intrigue me a lot and I used to comment on Smike's Facebook page whenever there's a new trailer that just came out of the website and after that, I just watch Apeit Gaming to see if I miss some details or what do they mean? What could they mean? What would they mean? Then I watch on Smites again. Alright, here's the last one. Number 7, the influence. A lot of you know this, that whenever there's a popular game, uh, there's always the fan-made games or like inspired games from the original game and the influence of Five Nights at Freddy's to game creators is the concept well if you guys play fan-made games of Five Nights at Freddy's you can tell right away oh this is inspired from Five Nights at Freddy's and there were only a few good ones that I've seen and played first one is Five Nights at Warriors Number two is One Night at Flumpty's. So number three is actually one of my favorites now, which is The Boogeyman. Number four is One Night at Flumpty's 2. So number five is Night Bites. Now Night Bites is, I think, made by students. Number six, probably the last one that I love, and probably the last game that I won't play again because it's just freaking me out so much and the controls are crazy. The joy of creation. Anyway, that's all uh, I have for you guys today and this video is requested by a friend who lives in Manila and she asked me in this tone, why do you love Five Nights at Freddy's so much? And I replied, you don't understand! And then she said, May make a video then. And I'm like, Okay, I'll make the freaking video! So yeah, give this video a thumbs up if you guys also love Five Nights at Freddy's. Also comment uh, what what things you like about Five Nights at Freddy's. And don't forget to sub sub for more randomness. Alright guys, so see you guys in the next video. Bye! Oh guys, before I go, I wanted to show you guys this. The official title coming tomorrow. The date.